statement. Americans have testified have, have suffered terribly uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. The virus has killed more than half a million of our fellow Americans and resulted in the loss of more than 22 million jobs, many of which have yet to come back. These losses of lives and livelihoods have not affected all Americans equally. Historic job losses have disproportionately impacted populations that were also hit hardest by the virus, including low-wage workers, Black Americans, and Latinxes. Women have suffered greater economic harm than men. Last summer, former Chair, Fed Chair Ben Mataki and current Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen testified before this committee that lower paid workers, women, and minorities are overly represented in the sectors hit hardest by the economic crisis, like restaurants and hotels. They explained that these groups, and I'm quoting their joint statement here, have borne a disproportionate share of the job and e income losses, end of quote. President Trump's own Treasury Secretary agreed. He testified before this committee last year that many industries and small businesses were, in his word, destroyed by the pandemic and the service industries employing lower wage workers, and I'm quoting again, have been particularly hard hit. Of course, many jobs have returned. 379,000 jobs were created in February, and the official unemployment rate has dropped to 6.2% from a high of 14.8% in the early months of the pandemic. This is encouraging news. But our economy has still not replaced roughly 10 million jobs that existed last year. And Fed Chair Jerome Powell has cautioned that the official unemployment rate fails to take into account the millions of Americans who have left the workforce due to coronavirus-related health or family reasons or because they work in industries that haven't come back yet. Even the official numbers show stark disparities. While the overall unemployment rate in February was 6.2%, the rate for white Americans stood at 5.6%, while the rate was 8.5% for Latin Xs and nearly 10% for Black Americans. These job losses can have devastating long-term consequences for people's future employment prospects and their ability to stay in their homes, care for their families, and avoid a spiral of unsustainable debt. Even as the stock market hits record highs, 42 million Americans, including one in six children, do not have enough to eat. The American Rescue Plan will lift these communities with urgently needed support. The Nonpartisan Urban Institute projects that this groundbreaking law will reduce poverty in America by one third and by more than half for children and for families facing job loss. Racial economic disparities will be reduced and the overall economy will be given a boost. Select Subcommittee is committed to working with the Biden-Harris administration to ensure the American Rescue Plan is implemented effectively, efficiently, and equitably so that it can, so that its full benefit 
can be realized. But rescue is only the first step toward recovery. Many economists are now sounding the alarm that if we fail to build the American, uh, res on the American rescue plan, we could see a fundamental inequitable post-pandemic economy where the wealthy reconsolidate their pre-pandemic prosperity while low-income families continue to suffer. We must be vigilant to ensure this reversion to economic inequity is avoided. That is why this morning, I sent a letter to the Office of Management and Budget and the Department of Labor, asking that they include data on employment disparities in the upcoming budget and put those metrics at the forefront of our efforts to reduce economic inequities. To succeed in building a strong and inclusive post-pandemic economy, we must, first and foremost, invest in our nation's infrastructure, as many economists are urging. We must put Americans to work at good wages, repairing our country's crumbling roads and bridges, enhancing rail and transit, expanding affordable access to broadband internet, upgrading water systems, building housing and schools, constructing state-of-the-art healthcare facilities, and transitioning to clean energy. As we make these investments, we must create opportunities for small businesses and ensure equity in federal procurement and lending. Taking these steps now will pay dividends for generations to come. Just like the American Rescue Plan, bold infrastructure investment has broad support across the country from Democrats, Republicans, and independents. Every member of this committee represents Americans in need of economic opportunity and communities in need of economic development. According to the Census Bureau, there are approximately 500 counties in the United States that are classified as persistent poverty counties. These are counties where 20% or more of their citizens have lived below the poverty level for the last 30 years. I have long advocated that resources be targeted into these communities. This is not a policy issue. Two thirds of the people in these communities are represented in this body by Republicans. I invite my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to work with my colleagues on my side of the aisle on an ambitious plan to get all Americans back to work building a strong, equitable, and sustainable economy.